So then I was like, hey, lady, you can't stand there. And she's just like, what the was? So, yeah, it was crazy. That's insane. That's insane. <laughs> Women. I just like interrupting all of Ian's opens because I know that he has like all this plan. He's like, well, I have nothing. Here's planned. what I'm going to say right when the show starts. Anything I can do to disrupt the flow, I'm like, I'm here for. I love it. Well, welcome back to the flannel panel. It's been a few weeks, and there's been a lot of stuff happening with uh, with everybody going on. So it's uh, it's great to be back, and uh, we got a we got a special one today, uh, a special one. Jason and Ty, who's jumping on a little bit. Uh, did a little bit of a, a traveling adventure to go see some uh, fantastic stuff in Wamigo. So, Boomtown happened. Beyond that, we have one of the uh, Tommy, Tommy D, Tommy D. I know it's been a couple weeks, but come, yeah, come yeah. on. It's and a whole at, new cast, Tommy. Look at, <laughs> Tommy, look at that picture. picture. That picture is solid. I love it. Oh, well, oh, sorry, it's Corey. A bold profile photo, Tom. And we have a special guest. Corey, do you want to introduce our, our special guest tonight? Yeah. So um, since you wanted to talk Boomtown, I thought that I would grab Chris Hoopy and bring him along. You guys got a chance to meet him at uh, Whiskey Weekend. Uh, yeah. But Chris runs the fireworks show. So plans the fireworks show uh, and has been a labor of love for him as well as every other <laughs> volunteer who helps put on the voted – best show in kansas and we brought proof because jason and ty and nat saw it and uh <coughs> can so it was yeah live. it was a that was it man so i brought the hoopster so this is going to be a little bit awkward but i was wanting to ask jason that i mean is it as good as advertised or, or are they overselling i mean <laughs> i'll leave the room <laughs> <laughs> it is DC's here. In whiskey terms, if a fireworks show was Buffalo Trace, this was Stag Junior. Oh, it is the most okay. amped up, frenetic, amazing show that there is no, there's no quiet spots. That's just from the get go. It's just go go go. I mean. It was sensory overload in the best way possible. I tried at first to like take pictures and be funny. And then like, you don't know what to look at. And then I just literally just laid back in the lawn chair, and just stared at one point, just got it all. And it was amazing. You know, and then I, I we were we were blessed enough to be up in the uh in you know the VIP places, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> up some VIP lawn chairs, and I was able to watch, you know. The emotion on Corey and everybody is there as is it's ending and it was actually you know for you know quite a, a special emotional show on top of that it, it was absolutely amazing the only thing i had complaints on is something they couldn't control over and it was hot as hell well you know? it was it was kansas in july fam like it was <laughs> that's I just I mean, I honestly thought, I mean, from the desert i mean 100 degrees <laughs> I honestly had no idea that Kansas was that humid. Yeah, it's super. I was warm. thinking like arid, even like southern Colorado or eastern Colorado is that it was. I mean, it was beautiful because it was green everywhere, and Wamigo itself is. I, I posted it. It's the most American city I've ever been in, and and we were lucky enough. We came, we came in uh, Wednesday night, and we rolled in. We actually made a, a route error, and we actually went through the small towns. And they're all nice, but then we go through, we end up on Main Street, Wamigo, and the lights, it's a beautiful, like, amazingly manicured city. Um, all the lights are on, and they even have the red, white, and blue Ferris wheel at the back, at the bottom, at the end of the road. And it honestly, it was like a perfect American city. So, and I had an absolute great time all the way through. So, well, I'm glad we're recording this because we're going to immediately send it to the Chamber of Commerce. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, the CVB. <laughs> <laughs> and Ty's here. Ty also made the trip to uh, to see it. I did. Um, I'm not sure where I'll... Breaking crap. Where all I'm coming in at here. Um, and hopefully my internet is working because it seems like it's crap right now. So... Uh, yeah, 
Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, yes. we can. Yeah. All right. Are you okay, Ty? Yes. Do we need to send help to your house? Huh? <laughs> Blink twice. Yes. <laughs> right. Let us know. <laughs> So Jason was just talking about uh, coming to Kansas. No, so you got out, them right at the right time. Yeah, went out to Wamigo. Um, for me, like it was kind of surreal because like the town I live in is so similar to Wamigo in so many ways. And so to watch a community that like rallies together to put on an event for sixty thousand people was unbelievable like it was inspiring from someone you know from a small town to see a group of volunteers do something at that level like it was it was ridiculous well the uh for those that don't know what we're talking about so the fireworks show is about sixty thousand people come to walmigo kansas which is just short of six thousand something like that mm -hmm. so it's 10 times the the population of the town to come watch fireworks show. And Chris has got all the for real stats, but we're talking what 12,000 pounds of fireworks and 29.58 seconds, <laughs> 29 <laughs> minutes, 58 seconds or something like that. Wow. <laughs> yes. There are a lot of fireworks as, as Jason attested. Absolutely. It was too. <laughs> I mean, I think the only, I mean, it was the, you know, the national anthem, and then as soon as the uh, rocket's red glare, it just never stopped. <laughs> as soon as we did. And it was, yeah. And the music was awesome. It just timed. It, it's just great. And I, I, I'm a little bit of a pyro, so I absolutely, they have those, they have the, you know, the, the fire pots of the dragons that like 30 foot basically flames in the air. And they have, how many of those do you have? 25. A shit well, I know. And they're all in a circle, so they kept going. It was like a like a Motley Crue concert. They actually had even a Motley Crue song in the middle. So it was like it was it was yeah, it was I can't say enough about it. I've i I'm definitely gonna go back in the future. So you said twenty, all right, 20 so half hour? It's a half hour straight of fireworks. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. What's up, Ty? Ty? All right, I, I got questions for Hoop here. Bring it. All right, so first of all, Hoop, how long have you been doing this? This was my uh, 23rd year. Wow. 23rd. How, how long has the display been happening in Wamigo? That has been happening since uh, no one alive can remember when it started. So it's been going on. Okay. And – you know, the, the genesis of our group was, uh, it was about 23 years ago, it, the, the town fathers or the chamber of commerce, uh, and my father was one of those people uh, growing up. On the 4th, they would go down and, and light the fireworks by the old Dutch mill in the city park, which you guys probably saw. Um, and it was a wonderful show. It was one of the only shows for miles and miles around. And... Uh, about the time I thought about coming back to this area post-college, uh, the regulations had started to change and licensing was required and there was a whole lot of rigmarole around shooting fireworks. And uh, those folks kind of said, uh, eh, this is a lot to get licensed and go through the certification. So we outsourced the show. When a small town takes a small budget and outsources a show, uh, the show changed markedly. And, and the thought was at that time, if we didn't find a way to take it back under wing and get this thing going again, this town might lose this everlasting tradition of the Norman Rockwell uh, America quintessential uh, fireworks Independence Day town. And, and that was the genesis of why we picked it up and started going because we knew if we lost it, it would never come back and the town would empty out on Independence Day versus having guests and visitors from around the world come in. So that's that's kind of where it all started. That was the vision and the hope. Is this some like a, a club that helps you do it or just a group of volunteers, random volunteers or? 
a bunch of volunteers, um, it's community members, it's home builders, bankers. Uh, we have just a whole dichotomy of, of people that are just community members, but they care and they wanted to do something bigger than themselves. And we have uh, 16 uh, volunteers that are trained pyrotechnicians on the shooting crew. Uh, we have another 17 trained uh, assistants to the pyro crew. Um, and then beyond that thing I'm really proud of is the whole volunteer element in that site, uh, helping with parking and the whole visitor experience. Um, we're at 78 volunteers that, that run that whole event down there at the complex. Wow. And all those people are giving up their independence day to create an opportunity for others to enjoy. And that's a piece that makes me extremely proud. And, uh, that's, that's the best part of it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I would give a huge compliment. I mean, obviously a town of 6,000, the infrastructure is not, readily prepared for that kind of influx um, Understatement. but yeah <laughs> but because of the way um the volunteers manage i mean everything from the parking to the bathrooms to the drinks like i mean granted Corey spoiled the crap out of us and i'm not sure i could go just watch the show again like <laughs> there's no way i could not do that vip experience uh you can't. So, it, it's a, it's a donor seating area, so you go to boomtownusa.com and enter your credit card information. <laughs> I was just going to pitch that. I was like, if I go back and Corey's not hooking up, I would, in a second, jump on that to do the donor site. Like, it would yeah. be a no-brainer for, I mean, anything over a family of four, I feel like, would be worth the donation oh, price. Easily to sit in there and watch that. Like it was one of the most unreal things, but I would say like the way it was managed and the way you guys facilitated handling that many people felt so flawless. Like I, I cannot praise that team. And I know who you're a big leader of that. And Corey is um, it's incredible. As someone that manages a lot of volunteers, that was, it was impressive. It really was. Well, thank you. And, and you two, those two men on, in the screen up there are some of the hardest working men I've ever seen when it comes to this. I got tired just watching you and I'm watching the, watching Corey literally at pretty much his last, what, nano bite of energy, just standing there, putting it together and just, just he's standing there by sheer will and constitution. And just love it. It helps that I don't I don't carry heavy stuff. So <laughs> that's a, my job. Is to, my job is to talk about the guys that carry heavy stuff. So that's a that's a that's by design. Uh. <laughs> well, so the neat thing is, well, good. I can take no credit, you know, for this. It it doesn't exist without every piece that's contributing, and and the partners on the crew and the power crew. The interesting thing is, we shoot one show a year as a group, and that's this one. Um, and once it's done, we really have no interest in saying the F word again, um, that being fireworks. <laughs> yeah. um, until well, you're sitting beside right? Corey, so I'm sure that. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, we just poured into this. And, but what's interesting is since we're not necessarily firework people by trade, we have a lot of interesting ideas and concepts that come just pure creativity uh, by virtue of the diverse group that's doing this. And. Uh, you know, the funding for this, you talked about the donor site. When you donate, you own a piece of the show because all that money goes into the production of the show. Uh, again, 100% volunteer. And the other thing I'm really proud of is, you know, you, you take this guy over here who's part of this in a big way. We put a lot of focus on, it's not about the fireworks. It's about celebrating America and what that day is all about. And in Corey's work, he does each year that that 10 minute pre-open that he rolls across the radio. <clears throat> that is so special to me. And uh, it really frames up why everybody's there and what we need to be thankful for. And then let's light it up and celebrate. No, you're right. Yeah. I think after that 10 minutes, 
I was ready to run up some stairs and box a giant Russian. And I mean, it, it was yeah. the craziest, like goosebumps and ready. Like, I was like, all right, let's do this. Like, so yeah, and, it was impressive. I'm sorry. And to your point, I was going to say the one of the coolest parts of the show, or one of the, like probably the most powerful spots, is the ending. And I say that is when it's all over and done, the sky's clear, the smoke's still billowing. And then the pyro crew walks all together off off the stage, basically, and gets out and high fives and hugs. And, you know, it was like it was, yeah, it was a very powerful moment. Like just just exciting uh, you know, completion of the show and just the, just, yeah, that part was awesome. Let's see. Hey, uh. How do I can I share a video, Ian, through all this or no? Yeah, I think you can hit share and then you did last time, right? <laughs> I think so. Oh, please hold. I think I might have it. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see. In the Wait meantime, for there's it. also Boom Town. Oh, there we go. part of the show. Crazy. Okay. I'll, I'll work to find another yeah. one. Yeah. I love it. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> you have to Wait, know hold hold in advance what songs you're planning on playing so to even get the Right fireworks to coordinate with it, I suppose. That's a big piece of it. So a lot of so, shows put, um, you know, play music to their fireworks, but we set fireworks to our music, and it's that's a little twist, right? So that there are a lot of signature moments in this, and and we're really blessed where we shoot because we're shooting across a four hundred thousand square foot shooting area with. Uh, 58 shooting sites within that area. It's 360 degrees that we're setting. And we have a really unique palette to work with to create this pyro musical. Um, and that art continues to develop each year as the technology continues to come along and, and makes it easier and more possible to create some of those moments. Because we're really trying to take, even though it's a People say it's the finale that never ends when they come to Wamigo, as you kind of alluded to. We're trying to take people on a journey with some highs, some lows, some soft moments, some hard hitting moments. And I mean, it's it's like a musical uh, or a, a production, a stage production. That's how we look at it. It definitely shows. Um, yeah, and after yeah. A, a perfect, once again, a perfect example of that is being from Kansas and being Wamigo, they're really famous for for. Uh, the Wizard of Oz, and uh, there's a part where they play over the rainbow, and you actually see they recreate a rainbow with fireworks. At least I thought I saw it. Yep, <laughs> so, you did. Okay. <laughs> so, You're not yeah, crazy. So, okay. <laughs> but yeah. So. They didn't even play that song, Jason. Where were you? Yeah, yeah there's yeah. a whole new meaning to light it up. Yeah. All right, here you go. Here's one more. There's going to be more more things going off at once. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, there it is. So, so there you go. There, there's, there's fire pots and pyro and motley crew and like all things going on if I was. that's amazing eric's here okay, so oh god uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you got a new nickname Troy. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and... sometimes <laughs> holy moly uh, <laughs> go Speaking ahead Ty. all right so Corey, i want to back up to the purple rain because hey. you told me like I think it was that night or I don't know, maybe it was before we got there or whatever. 
about the process it took for that team to create that effect. Like, it's crazy oh. to me when you tell about working something out, like, I'm just like, oh, order some purple fireworks, right? Yeah. So, like, um, Neil Ebert is the, like, the other partner for Chris, and he's got, like, a dream board that he, like, writes crazy stuff on in Hoopy Shop. So, uh, and it's stuff like Purple Rain, and it's been up there for a long time, but the, the trick was you couldn't find stuff that burned the right color purple. So, get stuff in and shoot it, and it just wasn't wasn't right or wasn't right. Uh, and then the idea of kind of doing it almost backwards where you're shooting fireworks, finding the right ones that shoot up at a rate where it's imitating rain, but upside down and then shooting stuff in the center of it. So like, it, it's pretty wild to see that. And then Neil was also, uh, wanted to do fire pots and things forever. So when those things showed up last year, like that was a whole nother like wild one. So there, I mean, there's stuff on the board that that's, that hasn't been touched yet. So there's probably like another five evolutions of the show written in dry erase marker in the wow. shop, uh, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, so just throw the spitballs on the wall and then eventually something comes along and allows us to do it. Yeah. So hopefully. I have a question as far as have you ever considered, and this might be like in the are you crazy way too much work department, but have you ever thought about documenting like the entire process from conception to making a baby funny you should ask whole <laughs> <laughs> different show it's almost like jason was at the <laughs> documentary screaming and uh, noticed when i said hey we're gonna make another one of these movies um so chris's son kale is a is a photographer and videographer and the last two shows we've had what eight cameras i think inside plus a drone and a static camera outside. So there's helmet cams and ground cameras and like, it's, it's, it's a lot. Um, so we'll be able to get point of view from the, the guys that shoot the show, uh, the show from inside the fence. Um, he had a camera going through the crowd this last time too, to get like reactions of cool people and their families and stuff while they're watching it, mm -hmm. which would be pretty crazy. But yeah, the, the goal is to, to actually do a kind of a, short documentary style feature about what the show looks like and what it took to get there. And also interviewing some of the guys about, you know, why they do what they do and why it's important and what it does for the town and the community and, and all, and all of it. So it should be pretty cool. Like, I don't like to me the it seems crazy. Like the Wamigo fireworks show should be on discovery channel, right? Like when they do the like deadliest catch, like that kind of shit, like that should be happening for the fireworks I was, show. I was thinking about putting it all together and uh, submit it to Sundance and we have a real party over here. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we all, we may all just be too normal. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. Hey, we don't scream wait, after, enough. There's some things that I've seen at Sundance that are, would, yeah, that you would definitely destroy. <laughs> well, if Corey, you met the Actually, a bunch of all of us met the guy you need to talk to, um, Patrick from Whiskey Weekend. Yeah, mm -hmm. he he's got the connections that could put that somewhere like make else. The, make the show happen. Yeah. Mm, well, so we might need to haul him to Kansas next uh, <laughs> <laughs> next July Fourth. <Yes. 4th. laughs> Let's yeah. do it. Let's go. We we'll just get a whole Whiskey uh, Weekend podcasters. Flannel panel, uh, little section going on in Let's the go. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, make it happen. I, I feel like didn't Will and Grease volunteer to do a sponsorship for next year? After? Yeah, sure. Mark it down. That's fine. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think that's, I think, well, I we, well, we that, said so. it anyway. So it's happening. Yep. <laughs> yeah, there's been discussions in Ohio of making the trip. So, yeah, we'd love to have you. Oh, yeah, you will not regret it. Yeah, yeah, it's worth it. It's we drove Jason and Natalie out to do some for real Kansas shit too while they were here. Oh yeah, we we, we they walked the Yellow Brick Road. Uh, <laughs> they uh, they went to the Oz Museum, literally the Wizard of Oz Museum. Uh, got wasted on wine. Down. Yeah, we drank. A piece of wine got here, by the way. Yeah, we drank Kansas wine. Uh, like we did, we did stuff, man. Like it was. It was funny when Nat was like, where are we going? And I was like, we're going to take the yellow brick road to go to breakfast. And she kind of thought I was joking. And there's actually a yellow brick road in town that runs down an alley. It goes to 
Friendship House for breakfast, and she was like, "Oh shit, you're serious. We're actually going to walk you down the, <laughs> you say, the yellow a, brick road to breakfast." That was a perfect segue because I was just going to bring up uh, who bought us breakfast, and it was amazing. And I forgot there is a Kansas delicacy that I ordered, and it was delicious, oh. and I already forgot what it was. It was a beer rock. Beer rocks, yeah. They oh. that's on the food bucket list. They were really good, and. The peanut butter cinnamon roll, or the peanut butter roll. There's no cinnamon in it. Oh, it's just yeah. a sweet That's roll okay. with peanut butter cream cheese on it, and it was just glorious. That's the <laughs> only way you can put it. It was. I'll, I can't eat a cinnamon roll again. I. That's. It destroyed them for me. <laughs> Beer kind of like a hot pocket. It's like bread with food inside of it. Meat and cheese yeah. and eggs and potatoes and. Yeah. Couldn't that be a pop tart too? Oh. Uh, yeah, I, I have a really thick one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a pairing coming up. It was more yeah. like a, a, a good version of a hot pocket, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. All right. Eric, I, uh, maybe a Midwestern Eric's town. Zone. Bring all the wild turkey, Eric. We'll, yeah. we, will, we will make a space for you. Yeah, Eric's in and tasting with all this stuff would be great. Well, I was going to say um, for all the whiskey people that watch, um, there's a decent little liquor store that's by the road too that we wandered into and you know they do some barrel picks that you uh, can conveniently see located yeah. behind Corey there yeah, and, yep. patriotically named spirits of 76 yeah hey oh that's a one yeah I forgot that I left that there <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually getting sad because I'm actually going through it more than I should had a boy good you should drink it that's what it's for Oh, I should have cracked my blue Christmas tonight, but I kind of forgot we were doing this and kind of scrambled <laughs> to get in here. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're I, doing some serious bathroom demolition, and I don't mean like you had too many beer arcs for breakfast. You're actually doing for real demolition <laughs> in your bathroom. Yeah, I don't think I can kill this in good conscience. It is 144 out of 144. Yeah. Oh, the last one. Yeah, the last man standing. Well, I was brought another one, so I have a backup oh, okay. I got a guy. I got a guy. Besides, you. Besides you, yeah. next time I see you. And <laughs> I got a guy. Corey, did you notice this? Yeah, so that's the that's the artwork oh. that's been in my garage for like a year. Yeah, yeah, I finally got some of it up. I like it. That's it's awesome. very classy. Yeah. So much more room for activities. <laughs> I, I, I was mostly worried I was going to get paint on As soon as we loaded that stuff into the car, Kim was taking stuff out to the garage. Like, <laughs> I've been waiting like for you, this day. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just mostly worried. That I just didn't want to get any paint on it. Although, there was a lot of magic books there, and that was like an opportunity wasted. Like, I could have been a magician. Mm. Yeah. I had the materials, and I could have practiced, and I did not I did none of that. It's true. No. Speaking of magic... We had a little quality uh, lunch interlude. <laughs> I heard that. the tie. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Was it. A great break under the for bus the and said, "Dance, monkey." Yeah, and we made <laughs> you perform outdoors with people uh, surround surrounding you, three hundred sixty degrees in the wind. In the wind. Uh, so it was like, uh, like in your face, David Blaine. Like, yeah, it, it was perfect <laughs> performing conditions. It's what I long for. Uh, there was. <laughs> Uh, more people that I can count, Ty, that were like, "When is Ty coming back to Kansas?" So, like, nice. they're 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 ready for the magic. So. Yeah. And what did what did we figure out? November eighteenth, November nineteenth, somewhere in there. Yeah, coming back for a, a fundraiser event here. Already. Yeah. Yeah, in Manhattan. Manhattan. Yeah. We'll try to party afterwards, not before. That way, you're not hungover for that. That's probably a good plan. Yeah, I like it. That's probably solid, a good plan. Solid effort. Yeah. That the 11 hour drive home after celebrating fireworks. What did you get pulled over for? Brutal. What do you think? It's Kansas. <laughs> I was trying so, to get the hell out of there. <laughs> so toting meth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was Missouri. Sorry. That would have been oh, if yeah. you were going the other direction. Yeah. Uh, no. 85 and a 70, like 10 minutes outside your door. It was it was bad. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did you get a ticket, or did you get let off with a warning, so, or 
Did you make his pin disappear so he could not write the there ticket? There you go. That would have been awesome. <laughs> I hate you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now, the the best part was so he's like license and registration. So I, 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 I have learned from our win. friend Chuck. Um, like you just set your hands on the steering wheel with your stuff. Like that's the best way to like have an officer know you're being nice. So I'm like sitting here. I'm like, here's my license. I'm like, it's a rental car. I don't know if there's a registration in here. And he's like, that's fine. I'll just run your license. Come back. So he runs, comes back. And so my phone's plugged in to the GPS and everything. And he comes back and he goes, I can't help but notice you have a really long drive in front of you, but you should slow down a little. <laughs> I was like, thank you, sir. I'm out. Yeah. See? So. Kansas hospitality. Yeah. So even the police officers were patriotic. Did you take the whole family tie or who went? No, it ended up just being me. So I actually flew out um, into Kansas City, drove up to Wamego, and then drove all the way home in a rental car. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So With your posters. Yeah, we've we've had a ton of travel already this year, and when we were talking about twenty four hours in a car in a matter of about three days, the family was like, "I don't know if we're ready for that." Like, well, we that survived like that. torture. Yeah. So. yeah. And then, did you show them the video and the photos when you got home? And you're like, "Are you sure you didn't want to go?" Well, they they desperately want to go back. They don't want to yeah. do it in a three day turnaround. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, It'll be a Tuesday but, next year, so yeah, I was going to say turn into Tuesday. like a five day weekend at Wamego. Yeah, yeah. I'll be off. So, so Ian, Fourth uh, of July is when Americans celebrate their independence from Britain. Um, gotcha. <laughs> we, we still haven't figured out how to do that yet. He has been yeah. quiet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. When did you get independence from? Oh, never mind. Yeah, when did yeah, you become independent from there. Britain? <laughs> still My bad. there. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know what they call July Fourth in Britain? <laughs> a work day, assholes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, same up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just July first, though. July first. We just wanted to party before you. Oh, That's so you're trying to get it in early. I like yeah. that. Have you ever seen those new Castle Brown Ale commercials from quite a few years ago? Those are funny. And they were what if Britain won the war? With the really there. tall guy, oh, right? With yeah, the, really the tall guy. The, yeah. What's his name? Yeah, the, name. the comedian. They're hilarious. Stephen Merchant. Yeah, that's it. And uh, Elizabeth Hurley does one too. They're funny. Look them up. Tip that's funny. Oh. So Troy, Troy also celebrates a little early, apparently. Well, yeah. Here, our yeah. local fireworks are always on the, the nearest Saturday, so. We were the second this year, so we. Uh, but our uh, fireworks, you know, we're proud of them, and they're a nice little draw in our little local area. But they're not on the same level. They're one at a time for half an hour, and then you get the the burst at the end for the grand finale. But it, yeah, it's a, it's a little different scale. Is that a jump clap, Jason? That was, <laughs> yeah. that was a you know, dainty just, one. Just one every once in a while for about an hour. <laughs> but, yeah. And then the burst at the end. I mean, come on. Yeah. That all goes off. Well, it depends on if it was a good night. But <laughs> <laughs> we have a, our house just happens to be in prime viewing area. They shoot them basically just past our backyard. So we can just put lawn chairs in the backyard and have prime cool. seats. So I bet it's a lot better now that there's no trees in the way. Yeah, <laughs> it's wide open. Wow. <laughs> <Bang. laughs> <laughs> Blow the belt a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who weren't with us last time, the tree fell on Troy's garage after a tornado, and he wasn't super thrilled about it. <laughs> no. We're still cleaning that up. <laughs> but, but you do have a fancy new smoke shack. That's said garage that got smashed. So, yeah, I have a smoke shack with a that's attached to the garage with yep. a big hole in the roof. But, yeah, yeah. So it's, a, it's a skylight now. So it's, it's fancy. Yeah, it, it's big. <laughs> Fireworks viewing area. Yeah, now you can start cars really? in there and it just goes right out the top. like Ventilation. Yeah. <laughs> Classy. Yeah. Classier. So Ty and Jason got to visit the 813 Whiskey House. Yeah. The, the bar. What, what was the pour? Our first pour was 
damn it. <laughs> oh, it was uh, the seventeen year. The seventeen, yeah. When I got there, we poured the Willet Black, uh, Black and Willet. Okay. Which was yeah. very nice. Good enough to where I bought a bottle from the movie store. Ooh. Seventeen. And then that, that no. was the big one. Oh, yeah. and I, I was, I, I actually, that, I'm pretty sure that Chris left this over here. So, uh, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> whoops. It was to share. I did, I, I it did bring problem. a, an old Forester that we, we cracked open. That was, oh yeah. Tasty. Yeah. I that was pretty special. It. Look at this. What? It was, it's a Japanese import nice. from 1990. Wow. I picked that up when I was getting our 12 days bottle. So. That's That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, and it's very good. Well, when you guys make it to my house, you're going to be very disappointed in my <laughs> collection. <laughs> you guys like Weller? Yeah, yeah. Michelle's hey. here. Hey, Michelle. You got you got cold beers over there, Troy. We yes, need we to do. Uh, we need to get Michelle on good, to talk about her keto weekend. That thing was amazing. Oh yeah, oh. Um, the Oak and Thieves. Yeah. Oh, I didn't sweet. try that while I was there. Well, you're just gonna have to make it all right, come back. Okay, I do want to talk about one pour though. Yep. Um, so the last pour that you poured for us, what was it? It was a uh, Balcones, wasn't it? <laughs> the brew, oh, yeah, the the brew area, yeah. Was that that wasn't the last thing we poured, but it was amongst the last. Well, thing. no, I think it was the last pour Jason and Nat had. Um, oh, that's right, because you stuck. You were because you, you right. Yeah, we we, I, we continued I, the beverage. I I was talked into it because you were like proud of this thing, and we're uh -huh. like, hey, we're all gonna have one more pour, and I'm like, I'm already toasted, and I gotta leave at like seven a.m. tomorrow. Like, yeah. I don't really want to do this, and then I had it. And I was thinking to myself, I I really did not want to do this because then I had to have another one to wash the flavor out of my mouth from that mm -hmm. thing. That was a tough one. It Listen, was, I'm not hey, sure if happens. you know this, but I am an evil genius. I, apparently, <laughs> yeah. My my next morning hurt after, that, and all I could think was that it was that stupid Texas whiskey. Right, that was it. It's within the outcomes. But did uh, Jason yeah. like it? I did. Yeah. It had a it had a very interesting. Uh, what did I say? Like a wine cask finished American single malt. Yeah, it did have a little bit of had a very very interesting. I'm trying to remember what it was. It was like a. It's like cocoa you described it as burnt cake. tires. Yeah, yeah, yeah Troy, I did. I, it's when you when you peel that's out. That's not good. On I'm the pretty sure Troy would have some good tasting notes for this one too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Troy would have punched it. it. Smells like a bad decision. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else I had there was fantastic, but yeah. yeah. Maybe it was just um it was probably your palate is was tainted from the smoke at the uh there you go. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I do. I do. That's a factor. <laughs> In full disclosure, the whole town is a little smoky for Three days uh -huh, afterwards, <laughs> not not from what we do, just everyone celebrating. Yeah, yeah, it, it's all the people from Colorado, right? Hoop. Uh, <laughs> no comment. Probably <laughs> takes two days to clean up the fireworks. Perhaps, perhaps. Yeah, I, I mentioned that to Jason at when they were driving in. I was like, watch out because it's it's going to seem like there's an assault happening on on town because of the amount of fireworks the the locals were shooting off oh, leading yeah. up to the fireworks show um because they started shooting off fireworks on what the, the uh, first absolutely canada yeah, day so. that's what they were just uh yeah celebrating yeah. for us right. that's what it was yeah we were shooting them <laughs> off for ian we were celebrating uh you know wayne gretzky and uh yeah. His his success over the British and uh, maple syrup and ketchup. Oh, so right. Yeah. Was, was it you, Corey? Somebody posted on Facebook like after from the areas, like due to the fireworks, we're now celebrating the eighth of July or something. <laughs> happy eighth of the July! Happy eighth of July, everybody! Yeah. yeah, there were people shooting off fireworks for a minute. I think that was Josh Boyer posted that. That's what it was. Yeah, it was like That's another Ohio funny. guy. <laughs> I had more PTSD from that than I did over in Iraq. It was there, was, and there were just random giant 
blast that did not sound like fireworks. There was a couple shotguns. I would agree with that. I thought a couple of those, like, oh, somebody blew up a transformer. Or, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It was I was like, the fireworks going off in Quarry Street on the 3rd mm -hmm. were better than our small town firework. <laughs> 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 it was crazy. <laughs> we, we, you missed. We, we know some guys that put on a pretty good home show. <laughs> there are a bunch of them. Yeah. I mean, that's where I cut my teeth, actually, in that show, just down the street from Corey's through uh, junior high and high school, uh, working with a local townsperson, C.R. Worthing. I actually lived uh, two blocks as a child from where Corey's house is now. And that thing uh, correlated with a, a real nice car show. And uh, boy, it's just a good, good time uh, leading up to the fourth. But you mentioned the uh, the cleanup. That's that's a big storyline also that's pretty awesome when you talk about volunteer spirit. Uh, a small army uh, descends on the site on July 5th at 8 a.m., uh, consisting of our local high school football team, cheerleaders, athletes from all types of sports, uh, school people, and just community volunteers. There were literally hundreds and hundreds of people, and they take that whole complex that just hosted all of that stuff and within by what 10 10 30 mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to tell there was an event there wow. the previous night it's unbelievable and that's pretty impressive that's pretty yes. important you know it's trying to cultivate a little bit of that community spirit and that volunteerism in action for real right so get out of bed on the fifth and go sweat <laughs> and do miserable there's been work. a couple of fifths where i've had a hard time getting up early because yeah. of the fifths he had the because night before yep. yeah. Yeah. Well, the fourth Amen. fifths carried over to the fifth yeah. <laughs> Starting yeah. young. Yeah. i sounded like a broken record but it was that's the thing about that town is i mean there's great towns but this town is very obvious that people take pride in it because of that very reason i mean you don't every single house uh kim's kim swore to me that she could take me uh to a side of town where I, she would uh, rebut the argument, but I'm like, I didn't see a single house that didn't have complete pride and everything was just perfect. The towns, like every building on, on Main Street was completely renovated and cleaned up and just the street. I didn't even see a lot of, I didn't see a piece of trash on the street on Main Street. I mean, it I mean, was, Jason was drinking for like three days straight. Like three straight yeah, so. It's it true. It was a lot. And he we gets ate, happy too. He gets happy. Ate, like, every great meal possible in town. And there was a there was usually a beverage available. Yeah. And there was just a slight bit of heat stroke going on in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so he was delirious as well. Was, yeah. Other than that, other all than those that. and all those emerald towers that were real. I saw every single one of them. <laughs> yeah. right, Corey and Hoop, I want to ask this because there was one during this show, but I want to I mean Hoop, you've been doing this forever. So are there are there moments that you remember that like were like pucker factors like oh crap like so, <laughs> we're gonna blow something up or this just went sideways I mean Corey said in the documentary phase like that knock on wood um, which is incredible and a testament to you all there hasn't been any serious injuries yeah um, but has there been is there memorable moments where you went like oh crap. Yeah, the, the pucker factor happens at 9.59 and 58 seconds uh, when you're about to push the go button on the sequencing, waiting to hear that soundtrack pipe back through the radio station and see that side ignite. It's kind of like launching a rocket. Um, that's every year. I, I was looking at my uh, heart statistics for my Apple Watch, and it's kind of funny that day because <laughs> it's just going burp, burp, burp. And then it, right before the show, it goes off the chart, right? The pulse. So um, that's a really stressful moment. But yeah, fortunately, you know, our, our planning and, and the group's work, the team's work, uh, we're volunteers, but they are incredibly professional. And uh, they set this show. There were 2,548 electrically fired events that occurred during that show that you saw. Um, and they set this year, every one of them perfectly, the electronic matching, the placement. There was not one mistake on that site 
Uh, now, in this show, there was, we had a couple electronic igniters that didn't work. And when you're setting that many electronic matches, that's going to happen. We had one device that uh, burnt on the north field, uh, a multi-shot of device, uh, 25 shots. It's called a cake. And it started burning and came apart and started laying over and shooting some shells in directions they weren't supposed to go. They were smaller. Fortunately, when it came apart, it broke the fuse internally and it quit firing about halfway through, or that could have been uh, not pleasant, but we have setbacks and safety distances. So those shells theoretically ground themselves out uh, before they get anywhere. Uh, we had another device that did not get all the way through a shooting pattern, but it was really clean this year. And uh, we do a lot of work with the setbacks and safety distances. Our racking systems are all overbuilt um for safety and if something was to detonate inside them heaven forbid uh we've tested them and they do not shatter and come apart which has happened sometimes um in in other places uh so we've been fortunate but it's not from a lack of a lot of planning and professionalism by our, our team i uh, just can't say enough about them yeah. i'm just proud to Proud to be able to work with those those folks. The only thing I can think of is that Evers happened is a they had a couple low breaks, but that's nothing to do with the team. That's just a, a firework itself where the lift charge didn't get it up yeah. high enough. So that's that's the that's the wake up call. You want to talk about pucker factor for those dudes that are when it doesn't go as high as you think it needs to go, but nothing that's been nothing that I can remember that's been too crazy. Two years ago we had a five inch shell come out of the air unexploded. Oh yeah, landed um, on the. On the roof it hit on a dugout beside where Neil and I are running the control center, and uh, Neil Neil starts tapping me on the shoulder like, "Did you see that?" And of course we have earplugs in; you can't you can't hear a whole lot. And he's turn around and pointing, kind of animated. And I look on the ground, and there's a shell laying there. And those things are going to about, you know, four fifty to to you know five hundred feet up, and then that ball's coming back down. That that would have really harmed somebody had it hit someone. Wow. Uh, that's a little, that's a little scary. That's the only time I've seen that happen. But uh, eek. Yeah. <laughs> we have a good supplier uh, that they bring good product in when we didn't always have that in the beginning. Uh, we had some suspect stuff in the early years <laughs> and uh, knock on wood. I was like, this sounds like, Colorado in the early days of legalizing right now. <laughs> yeah, you get what you pay for. <laughs> Similar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys just saw that. I don't, I don't, I get nervous for the same thing Chris does is making sure that the, the coordination between the soundtrack and the audio and everything all hits off at the same time. So I felt bad. Uh, I'm like a tiger in a cage walking back and forth along the bars, right? Like right there by the front, waiting for everything to go until it, it actually, <laughs> it actually goes. Yeah. No. Not pleasant. <laughs> Once it starts, I'm like, oh, the music's on. Oh, first shells in the air. Okay, I can calm down. I'll yeah. pace myself a little bit. Now we're good. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so I I haven't made it out to Kansas yet, but what I do know about Corey and the group around him is the team aspect is so imperative. And like whether it's the the whiskey syndicate or. Uh, the pyro crew, whatever it is, and I can just see how much, how well you guys work together, and I and I love that. I think uh, I think the world needs to strive to be like that a little bit and take that team aspect and and care for your your team and all that stuff, and uh, it it shows a lot. And I, I appreciate that you're kind of part of our team and 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 all that. So uh, we we love you guys in Kansas, and and it was a awesome show. So. I will make it. I will make it very soon. I, I promise that. Uh, yeah, You'll yeah. bring your whole crew. It'll be awesome, bud. Mm -hmm. uh, Troy, Troy's out next week, right? Yes, I'll be out of town. I'm coming up to Canada with the goal of not buying any gasoline. Good. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and and smart the goal decision. Is not <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I I haven't done the math, but I think it's like nine dollars a gallon, something like that up there. Oh it's, yeah, because you're it's all metric, right? So it's price like per liter. Something a liter, yeah. Two dollars a liter, yeah. Jeez. So uh yeah. But almost eight, yeah. Yeah. Not not fun. Um, but you're flying it, you're going remote 
uh, remote Canada, Northern Ontario, flying in and yep. uh, going for, going to do some fishing. That'll be fun. Good Lord willing, we won't see anybody for the week we're in camp and <laughs> and because uh, usually if you do, it's a game warden or whatever they're called up there. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. It's been two years since we've been able to go with COVID, so it should be a good trip. Everybody's pretty amped up, so. Yeah. So, so it's your family. You've done this for a long time, and and what's the like, the haul? What do you have to bring for uh, whiskey and whatnot for I was the week? Say, yeah. Okay. So, uh, or do you not want to say till after you cross the border? Yeah. Wait till you get. Yeah. Back. <laughs> this is all <laughs> Canadian club is from here or from Canada. Yeah. On paper, what we figure loosely is three cases of beer per person for the week, and okay. then whatever whiskey you want to bring. So I've got my beer and I've I've just got two bottles. So which bottles to, did you pick? I went all uh well turkey products this year. I've got a bottle of rare breed and a uh, Russell's Reserve single barrel pick. All right. Um I was gonna bring a Buffalo Trace because some of the guys don't like high proof, but you know, they're bringing their own stuff. So if I'm gonna have two bottles, I want to make sure it's stuff I like. So so do you pick up your Canadian club in Canada or do you smuggle it over? They give that to everybody when you cross the border. It's like, thanks for coming. Here you are. Here's your Canadian club. Here's your ketchup chips. And uh, oh, yeah. the, the Timmy Hortons is right over that way. And, yeah. uh, that, and a platter of poutine. I, think, yeah. I, I was going to say, in honor of Ian, uh, Corey took this. is a really cool bar and we had poutine. It was very delicious. It is. But I will try to take some pictures to uh, hopefully share next week. Hopefully holding up some large fish. Hopefully bigger than the one Will has. <laughs> yes. Will's, oh. Will's proud of those fish, though. Like, he's doing but, hey, and fly hey, fish. The little ones are hey, I have more, anybody who can catch. catch anything with a fly. <laughs> yeah. Anything that anybody can catch anything with a fly rig. You yeah. have my respect. Yeah, I don't know anything I about have, fly fishing. I have the attention span to survive fly fishing. Man, that guy, that guy just loves it too. You can see oh, it yeah. on his face. Yeah. He's just right in and it's his happy place. I love it. He's fa he's found that thing for him. So yeah. So Troy, what do you what's the fish you're going after? We're most we're after walleye. And gotcha. uh that that's pretty much all we catch. We'll catch northern pike and then the occasional yellow perch, but yeah. No smallmouth where we're at. Okay. So and uh fish fry, is that the goal? Yes, we all, yeah, uh, the, everybody's excited, I guess, but we've decided to alter the menu this year. We're eating fish for dinner at least four, maybe five times this week. So it's going to be a fish heavy diet. Is that to keep Patty happy? No, because it's all fried. You oh, know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, the two bottles of whiskey <laughs> yeah, and the three There's not beer. much about this trip that makes Patty happy. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the go-to, like, what's your favorite meal for the fish meal? Oh, generally, we batter is a big thing. Uh, I, I lean towards, like, a beer batter over, like, a cornmeal batter. But then, like, we'll, we'll do coleslaw several times and then usually some sort of fried potatoes or something like that. Yeah. You know, it's it's fresh, that. fresh wallet. You don't need to fry it. You can, you know, you, you it's not healthy. sushi, you and go you gotta healthy. cook it. You, you can go healthy. <laughs> you can fry some a little bit of lemon, a little bit straight we, up. It doesn't we, we do bread. You don't have to throw do, bread on it. Do some sort of a uh, we'll wrap them in foil and like put yeah, them over the see. fire and kind of steam them, kind of thing. We do that. Yeah. Five nights, we're gonna have several varieties. I'm <laughs> sure you could tell Patty that you went the healthy, healthy way the whole time. Patty helped. I buy the groceries, so we just did that the other <laughs> night. And Patty goes with me every year. You ought to see that checkout lane. It's we bought twenty boxes of Little Debbie's. <laughs> Eric will be proud. Eric will be proud. Macaroni and cheese. You know, eight boxes of fish batter. It's just five pounds of candy, tootsie rolls, and bits bit of honeys. And it just it's the worst looking grocery cart you ever saw. <laughs> Sounds like scout camp when I was a kid. The the only vegetable in that cart was the bags of cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm assuming that you, uh, you you go through the self checkout with all that, then just uh, scan. <laughs> this it year we did it. Saved a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is this for you? Uh, yeah. So Ty, yeah. when are you yeah. uh, flying in for this? This sounds like some prime oh, man. video opportunity. 
Rural, yeah, I think Ty would like it. Ontario, catching yeah, some solid no, fish. That, it, yeah, I was like, not seeing people for a week and just fishing sounds like everything I want to do right now. That sounds fantastic. It's a very hard trip to get there, but once you're there, you know, while you're getting there, you're like, oh, I'm never doing this again. But a day into it, you know, you remember why you came back. It's it's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's Can- totally Canada's wild up there. You know? So hard to travel in, you know. Yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah. No, it, it's just <laughs> a long ways, you know. <laughs> I know. So are you, how, what are, where do you travel through then? We're going to go up through Michigan, which okay. smells funny. Uh, cross that's those, that's those junkies, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we cross at uh, Sault Ste. Marie. Okay, which, you know, go so you're, across you're the Mackinac Bridge. Me, then you're far from me, yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. up uh, along the what is that, Lake Michigan and Lake Superior to Wawa, and then we go east from there. Gotcha, mm-hmm. yeah, through Letterkenny or no? Oh, Letterkenny's you know, all over there. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> if you watch Letterkenny, but the Shorzy series. Shorzy is they, great. They mentioned yeah. a lot of the teams. Uh, a lot of the teams' names were little towns we've been to. Yep, that's funny. That would make sense. Yeah, <laughs> I'm excited for a recap from this trip, Troy. Yep. Me too. Yeah. T- take notes like throughout because I know you'll forget stuff like by oh, the yeah. next morning. So I, I don't know how all well those notes are going to go. Three cases of beer and two bottles of whiskey for <laughs> we, four we do days. keep it or, like a daily yeah. journal. You know, <laughs> highlights of the day, big fish. We you know we have a little fish pot for the day, the biggest walleye and the biggest pike for the day. So nice, nice. And uh, you can and win up to twelve dollars a day. So I expect to come whoa, back about six. You come back loaded, sure. man. You're going to be oh, rolling. Yeah. rolling he'll, in. he'll be covering the cost of the tootsie rolls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you play cards for a buck a game too. You're going to be flush. Oh yeah, we've got poker chips and. But fun. it's just getting there, you know. Like, like tomorrow, we're driving the whole. Usually, we'll drive 700 miles and stay overnight. But tomorrow, we're driving the whole 865 or whatever it is. It's weird for me. Miles like eight. 865 kilometers is way less than 865 <laughs> yes. miles. Yeah, I don't know. So is that to shorten the trip once you get to Canada because it's in kilometers? Yeah, it goes no. faster. <laughs> Just watch that speedometer. We got pulled over two years in a row by the same cop really? a couple years ago. Yeah. He let my dad off both times because he was a veteran. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he told us. Going that speed on this road is a real good chance you're going to hit a swamp donkey, which we didn't know, but that's a moose. A moose? <laughs> that's got to be that's got to be pretty far north then. That's north of yeah. that's north of Sault Ste. Marie for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that Canadian cop was like thanking your old man for keeping the world safe. Is that, I, is that, I guess is so. Yeah. Was, yeah. Thanks for protecting us. Is that how that was? Yeah, I mean, it's the first question he asked both times. Uh, are you a veteran by any chance? He goes, yes, I am. <laughs> so note to everyone, just say yes. Yes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Thank you for not defecting to our country during the Vietnam War. <laughs> <laughs> we, could, we could go off here. Uh, <laughs> like your political stance lately has been a little bit of a mess. Um, <laughs> so was so was ours, but <laughs> uh, and on that note, I think it's time for Corey. You got the let's do the banner. Oh time yeah. Just, oh, the tip. just the tip. Does anyone have a just the tip? Yes, I want to go first just so I can beat Jason to it. Go to right. Boomtown. That's oh, it. Yes. There it is. Yeah. That's it. Fourth of July, go to Boomtown, Wamego, Kansas. We'll see you there. Hands down. Pay for the VIP seating, sponsor, whatever that takes. What was that address again, Corey? BoomtownUSA.com. And if you, you sponsor go. enough, they'll call your name just before. The sponsor the- spot, oh, yeah. right. Whatever it takes, cool. just go. We expect to have a entire section to ourselves. Go for it. All right. Who's next? Well, An- Andrew just said. He's a Canadian. Oh. Yeah. Was you try to come. You probably want to come down and oh, jump over the border so we can fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking of fighting, my tip was go see Thor. Oh yeah, I've heard this. Since that show, it's great. It's it's funny. It's hilarious, but also 
very it's a, they do what marvel does it's it was funny i literally laughed in a couple spots up until i started crying because it went from funny to, to heartfelt um the goats the goats you'll know what i'm talking about when you see the movie but the goats deserve the best supporting actors <laughs> i love goats okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah like the greatest of all time movies? or like, no goats know. actual goats Thor, oh, in, in mythology, Thor actually had a set of goats that pulled his chariot, and they use it in the show, and it's funny as hell. Okay. I look forward to watching it. <laughs> Don't you know your mythology, Ian? No. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nordic. I have to know that shit. Yeah, I, I'd expect you to. Uh, 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 Corey? Yeah, so normally I throw out some sort of new music that I'm listening to, but I have yeah. not been listening to new music the last couple of weeks. I've been listening to old music, <laughs> and I got like in a old school country Chris Ledoux rut lately. And damn it, if you're not listening to some for real damn cowboy country music, like, and you need it, like Chris Ledoux is it, man. He's a for real Wyoming road rodeo cowboy, and his stuff is real good. So that's yeah, she has a brand of whiskey in Wyoming. Yeah, like so. It's not good, but it looks boot good. up your Apple <laughs> Music or Spotify or whatever it is that you need and find you some old school Chris Ledoux and, and Chris turn Ledoux. it up real loud in the truck. Nice. Well, well I'm going to recommend something I haven't even watched yet, but uh, it's on my list. I've I've not watched the last seat or the newest season of Stranger Things yet, but I hear good things. I don't know if you guys are following that. Very good. But uh, never watched it. Well, now you can just binge the whole thing. The just whole because thing. you said it. Yep. And I also wanted to mention that our new Riff Maverick pick, our new Riff Rye pick is coming up here in less than two weeks. So That's the awesome. 25th, we will be in Kentucky. Uh, Eric's coming with us, uh, Eric Greenway. Awesome. And so, that's to go uh, pick it, right? Yes, to go pick it. And I don't know. I hear two, three months to, to barrel it, but at least we'll have it picked and hopefully more to report after that. That's exciting. Hell nice. Yeah. That'll be fun. Definitely. Hoopy, you got to adjust the tip? Oh, I get to join in on this. I'm <laughs> of honored. course. Of course. Well, of course. Thanks for the opportunity to be with you all. I guess um, in the words of Zach Brown, uh, you get what you give. And uh, open yourself up to, to meeting new people and, and getting engaged. And I guess as, as a volunteer, I've grown so much from the people I've had the blessing to affiliate with. Um, that's what life's all about. And I think back to whiskey weekend and, and getting to go and, and join that group and meet new people and the hospitality and friendship that's shown, you just open yourself up and, and you leave better. And that's with all things. So that's my tip. Uh. Dang, he's super responsible. Yeah, he brought the heat. Oh, hey. <laughs> and on that note, uh, stay buttoned up. What do we? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How do you uh, that? Well done, well done. Uh, that's that's beautiful and perfect. I, I love that. It is. Mm -hmm. Jason, did you give one? Yeah, he said go yes. watch Thor. 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 He talked about goats. Guys, I'm tired. And it's been a long go. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, it's like my, two a.m. in Canada. No, it's just 10, but I, it's been a long go. Uh, uh, the Terminalist, I've been saying this forever. The oh, book, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's now on Amazon Prime. You can watch it. Chris Pratt. Uh, it doesn't follow the book completely, but I was I was really impressed with the overall series. You got to get through the first episode. It's kind of challenging to watch uh, and take in, but then as you get through it, really, uh, you know, ramps up and, and gets into stuff. So give that a give that a watch and uh and if you're into that stuff at all i i can't hype the guy enough jack carr is a as a former navy seal uh who wrote the book and wrote the series he's got some really great stuff just search him on youtube and and really cool so that'd be my just the tip for the week nice like, i think that kind of wraps us up anybody got anything going on no just this I think that's perfect just this well next week we will see you guys Troy won't be around. He'll be uh, uh, half in the bag, running around with with. Uh, what does Jason want him to wear? <laughs> what was that? Flannel shorts. Flannel shorts. Oh, yeah. oh, the, <laughs> the dick highs. 
<laughs> just get a flannel jumper. I'll settle That's for That's what it is. <laughs> uh, romper. Be, All right, flannel romper. Troy will be running around in some sort of flannel up north uh, in Ontario and and we'll see you guys then. Uh, you can find us all on Instagram, Flannel Panel Streams. Uh, Troy will be hopefully throwing some big fish pictures up there. That's not a euphemism. So. Uh, Jason, where can we find you? I forgot. World in my glass at uh, Instagram. <laughs> all right. There you go. <laughs> Ty, what's going on with you? Ty was actually out fishing recently, too. Yeah, I went out yesterday. Got more sunburnt than I caught fish, but it was good. Did you catch uh, a buzz? Always. Then it was a good day fishing. Yeah. All right. It's a fish times up outdoors, magic, at mind blown, tell your head. Sweet. And eight times uh, up, go, go register and get some cool swag. I should have brought it down, but. His swag, I got his swag over the weekend, and it's oh yeah, it's a yeah I'm excited for this one. Yeah, Wicked cool bag. Corey uh, at CD underscore Reeves on Instagram. That's where I post pictures of booze and painting and all that good stuff. And then live every morning, baby, six to ten a.m. Central Time, b 1047com so, Yeah, jump and on July fourth on the infield with Hoop mm. in Wamego, Kansas. Yeah, yes, and. Spirit of 76, uh, is it the liquor store? Spirit of 76, mm -hmm. we can find Hoopy and uh, and check out some bottles there. If you're ever stopping by, I'm sure he'll uh, he'll hook you up. And apparently, don't ask for the owner on July 4th, they will laugh <laughs> but, but definitely like, ask well, for Blanton's. I think that's what yeah, you do, right? Yeah, yeah, they're giving yeah. it out, they yeah, keep it under the counter. I am. <laughs> that's what it is, that's what it is. <laughs> Yeah. Trey, you got anything? No, nope, final streams. Good. Perfect. All right. Until next time. Stay buttoned stay up. Buttoned up. Cheers, everyone. See you, buddy.